Hi, Conscious Mothers. Excited to talk about how yesterday went and to launch day two of our Emotional Clench Challenge. And as I'm sitting here looking at my, um, ref what do you call it? Reflection, I guess we call it. Um, I'm just seeing, I stayed up too late with my husband last night watching shows, <laughs> which I rarely do. I almost never watch TV <clears throat> as a part of my way that I take care of myself and um, take take intelligent action. But I took some unintelligent action last night and had a little bit of a marathon. And now I'm just seeing the bags, so it is. I'm living with the consequences of my choices right now. <clears throat> but, uh, nevertheless, I'm so excited to be here with you guys and I'm really, really pumped, hi Andrea, to um, dive into day two of the challenge. So you guys, okay, this is gonna be an awesome day because you have one day under the belt of, of self-reflection, right? I'm waiting for people to come on, so I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna chatter for a second. We, we, um, let's, let's have a little bit of a recap of yesterday. So first I want to say welcome. So many new people here. I want to say welcome to all of you. I'm really excited that you wanted to participate. Can you guys hear me? Okay. I'm not wearing the things. I just didn't feel like it. Um, hi Sonia. So glad you're participating. So many of you guys really stepping up to take some new ownership of your life, of your experience. And, um, and I'm really thrilled for that. I love, love, love helping women to take more ownership of their experience so that it can get better, so that we can start to really live the life we're meant to live here. So welcome to all of you who are new. Welcome to all of you who are just just um, kind of joining for the, the emotional cleanse, the challenge, and haven't been here before. Um, please do participate and show up for yourselves. Super excited for all of you. Thank you, Colleen. I'm glad you guys can hear me. Um, super excited for to, to get to know you all and, and just facilitate this this and hold space for you to, um, to claim some more of your power by owning your experience. So <clears throat> yesterday, if you haven't watched it yet, I want to give you a couple action items. If you haven't yet watched day one of this challenge, if you're new here, then do that piece first. So start with day one, watch the entire video, listen to your body as you watch, take cues from what you feel to guide you. You are divinely intelligent. Your body is, is uh, a complete expression of your unconscious mind. We can safely listen to that and trust the cues that it gives us. <clears throat> so as you listen to day one with your pen and paper in hand, really write down what comes to mind for you. And uh, the outcome from yesterday was to identify one emotional state or one feeling state, one, one feeling that you notice you get stuck in or that drags you down or that's heavy for you and you don't know how to get out of it. And this is the piece of baggage that we're here to really uh, uh, help bring to the surface for releasing and it may be we've seen so many amazing are you guys checking in are you reading the comments please do that so that um, we can lift each other up and really uh, encourage each other through this experience and um, you know I saw everything from anxiety resentment anger uh, overwhelm to um, feeling checked out disconnected Lots and lots of, of um, different responses there. And so that's beautiful. You're doing so well with this, doing really, really well. And day two is a bit of a shift. So before we get to that, I wanna just recap, make sure you've watched day one. It's okay if you're starting late here, it's fine. Go back, do day one, and then we're gonna launch into day two. So some of you had trouble. I wanna first address some problems that came up. Some of you had trouble selecting or, or choosing one emotion that for you feels like the biggest one or the one you really most want to change. And so I'm going to offer you some, some coaching about that right now. This is my gift to you today. Yesterday I talked about wishy-washy energy, which is a trouble making a decision. And Sadia, I saw you commented on that too. Like, yes, I know that comes up for you. Trouble making a decision comes from that 
wishy-washy energy that like, well, I could, but, and so I'll just sit and overanalyze like the wheel of death spinning when your internet isn't working. It's like our mind and what it does when we're in overwhelm. So frustrating. I, I cannot live there. I can't tolerate that state now. Uh, I used to be there, but that's, that's, um, it's such a time killer, time waster, energy sucker, all those things. So when you come at this challenge, what you're going to notice is how you do how you do anything is how you do everything. Okay, and I teach the women in, in Awakened Motherhood this all the time. How you come into that program, how you come into this challenge, how you take on any, um, any challenge in your life is how you do everything, basically. So kind of at the core level, we are a system of thoughts, of emotions, of beliefs, so energetic patterns. And these patterns are very layered in us. And whatever, um, whatever our sort of rote um, response is to something hard or new or to change, we're just going to bump into that all the time. So if you've never noticed that or recognized that, I invite you to courageously just start observing that and start noticing. So how you do anything is how you do everything. How you enter this challenge. If you come in, you're going to come in like with who you are most of the time. You know, you're going to come in with like all the aspects of yourself that you have, sp all the wheels you have spinning. And if you come in and you notice some part of it is hard for you, that's something that's coming up in your life anyway, right? So awesome. Celebrate. Let's celebrate it. Cool. Yeah, there's a challenge. All right. So that comes up anyway for you in your life. So that's a thing that is hard for you, probably creating overwhelm for you uh, currently. So we're gonna meet that challenge with just a lot of openness, okay? Just, it just is, it just is. There's no need to hide, avoid, turn away, judge it. Just, let's just meet it where it is. Meet yourself where you are, right? And so, hi Maria, yay. Thanks for saying hi when you guys come on. Okay, so just this little bit um, of what you noticed in terms of yesterday, and I'm getting to the point here, which is some of you had trouble finding one thing. And I want to just reflect on that with you. Why is it hard to, to identify just one thing? Is it that I don't really know what I feel? I just, I never did this before. I'm new to like thinking about what I'm feeling. This is, I'm just on step one of like noticing me. Okay, great. Or is it something else? Is it I kind of feel... Um, like there are so many things happening for me, I just can't choose. So I'm just noticing like three things and okay, or whatever the thing is, let's reflect on that together. Hi, Nora. Hi, Jennifer. Let's reflect on that together and then let's figure out what it is that is getting in the way of you following this simple process that I've laid out, not easy, but simple. So notice about yourself, just no judgment, but like, so when I notice that there's a lot going on, AKA overwhelm, and I feel like, oh my God, what do I choose? What do you do? I get overwhelmed by how to make a decision. I don't know which way to turn. I don't know how to trust myself. I get caught up and whipped up in doubt in the what ifs and the future worry and all the potential, infinite potentials, scenarios, and on and on and on, right? So it's hard for me to choose that something that is a symptom of overwhelm, that is a result of not trusting ourselves and a lot of other things that I teach in Awakening Motherhood I won't go into now, but you get the idea. So if you're someone who came in and was like, I don't know what I feel, I can't choose, or, or there's so many big things happening for me, I just need to focus on all of them, you are not gonna get the results that you came to this cleanse for. Why? Because simplicity is the name of the game when we are moving patterns, when we are eliminating what we no longer need. We cannot eat the whole elephant at once. And if you've worked with me before, you've heard me say this, like we don't wanna try to take on 30 things at once because that will create overwhelm, right? So do what you can. And the direction, also interestingly enough, some of you didn't follow directions. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm laughing with you. I'm laughing. I'm laughing at at, um, 
at how I'm teaching this um, because I, I have no judgment about it at all. But I just want you to have that reflection about like what came up in you when you were asked to choose one thing and then give that simple uh, bit of evidence about how it um, shows up for you. And everybody who's worked with me before was so dialed in on that, which I love. Because I, I think once you know your patterns, then you have no problem identifying it and then moving it. And that's the cool thing about, about that empowering piece of self-awareness. Some of you are really new to this. And so I'm walking with you and, and helping you to hold the boundaries around your experience. All right. So let's zoom up to day two. So um, we're learning as we go and, and you're gonna sort of like um, be uncomfortable at certain times and like, that's fine, that's good. Uh, feelings are, are uncomfortable. You know, there, there are a lot of us who were not really held in our feelings when we were younger. And I talked a lot about this yesterday. And so as you learn to feel, as you learn to let yourself feel, and be a feeling person and not make it bad or wrong, then you will gain that kind of confidence in your full experience and start to be able to trust yourself more. Okay, so ideally, if you're practicing this every day. So we're on day two. Hi, you guys, jumping on. I'm excited you're here. We're gonna we're gonna kick off day two right now. That was a bit of a recap and some reflection and um, for all of you. So Day two is about clarity. I know some of you didn't feel really clear about what you wanted to focus on yesterday. And there's no right or wrong answer. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There's simply like, what bothers me? I'm gonna pick that thing, right? That's it. So if you notice pressure to choose or um, pressure you were putting on yourself or you didn't wanna do it wrong or you felt scared to be seen, those are all patterns that are active in your everyday life, in motherhood, in your career, in your marriage. They're all here. They're all already here. They aren't new to this cleanse. So be brave enough to acknowledge like, oh, you know, I got, I got these things going on. These are in my way, right? These are the obstacles in my way of having the joy I want or having the connection with my kids that I want, right? So we did all that and, um, and this is bringing you into a, a readiness to own the clarity that you're finding, okay? So I'm not doing this to you or for you. You're doing it 100% on your own. You chose to sign up, you chose to participate, you chose to be seen. I love it that you guys are doing that, that you're putting yourselves out there. I know it's really, really hard for some of you who do feel anxious about being judged or I just, I, and none of that is allowed here and I just really appreciate you owning the reality of where you are and how you're feeling and letting yourself be seen and supported and held by this beautiful group. So. On the topic of clarity, day two, what I want to start with is what you notice that you're feeling and the evidence of it. So how you know when you're feeling overwhelmed, you yell at your kids. How you know when you're resenting a partner, you start to pick at him or her, or you beat yourself up and what that looks like or how it feels in your body. Some of you are were able to identify that, which is awesome. That feeling state, like overwhelm, anger, anxiety, whatever it is, that is your energetic signature, I'm gonna call it. And what I wanna say about feeling that way, and I'm gonna offer a bit of a teaching and training on this right now, is that that feeling of overwhelm or anxiety or resentment is a thing that you are in harmony with. Whatever we feel is a state, kind of an energetic state. All things are energy. I know, you've heard me talk about that, but like, you know that I know that, that everything is energy and emotions are also energy. And people, a lot of people are not talking about this. Um, this is not sort of your run of the mill conversation about feelings, but everything moves, everything vibrates, everything moves. Everything is frequency and energy, including our emotions. <clears throat> and so when we're talking about healing wounds we're talking about moving energy we're talking about releasing stuck emotions 
and blocks that are within us that we are hanging on to. A lot of times like we don't mean to, we don't want to. It makes us mad that they're in there, but we want to let them go, but we don't know how and we're scared. And so whatever it is, whatever the block is, whatever the energy is, this is something that we are in harmony with, you guys. I'm inviting you into radical ownership today. I really want to blow your mind about this and really get you to the table of decision making about your own life. If I'm angry or resentful and I'm playing negative thoughts that are all about that feeling, that support that feeling, that uphold that feeling, that prove that feeling is justifiable, worthwhile, important, that I'm right then all of my being, my thoughts, my feelings, and my energy are supporting that state and I'm in harmony with it. Usually when we hear the word harmony, it is some kind of pleasant idea. What are we in harmony with? But we can be in harmony with anything and we are in harmony with what we feel. So we are in harmony with negativity, with fear, with worry, with bad stuff coming our way, when we're in anxiety, when we're in overwhelm. That is what we are in harmony with. When we are resentful, when we're mad at, the, at, at our families for not appreciating us, so martyrdom energy or victimhood energy, we're in harmony with a lack of appreciation. So feeling empty, broke, poor, you know, emotionally sort of in poverty. Uh, we're not getting what we want out of life. We're mad about it, right? So we're in harmony with disrespect. We're in harmony with emptiness or <clears throat> loneliness. These, these are states that we get into harmony with for many, many reasons. And I'm not going to go into all of that because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really does not matter. Sometimes people want to go to therapy and analyze their whole life and they want to detail how, where things started and what's the origin and why it's showing up now. But why? Like, why? Would you rather, would you like to do that for three years or would you rather just find out what's going on in you and change the pattern? You know what I mean? So what are you in harmony with? And I want you to be brave enough to acknowledge that. Yesterday you named this feeling state. Today I want you to acknowledge I'm in harmony with that. And so what does that mean? Well, I want to just say a little bit about that energetic signature. So what I mean with that is like it's the energy that you are resonating with. If you are a, a vessel, a receptacle, whatever, whichever way you want to think about it, you are a container for, you guys give me a, give me an example. What's the feeling that you named yesterday? And I'll, I'll use that one. It takes a second for comments to come up. If you're contain, if you're containing um, frustration, if that's what gets the best of you, want and winds up, you wind up blowing up and yelling at your kids and then seeing their little faces and knowing what you're doing to them. And it's so painful. It's so, so painful. If you are, okay, fear's coming up. So, so that frustration or fear, you're receptacle for fear. You know when you have fear in your body, you're vibrating with that frequency. It's a really low frequency. When you're, when you're skating in that fear vibe, and you're kind of, or you're containing it, you're feeling it, you're activating it, even if it's subtle, and you think it doesn't come up that much, but really, really come to the table of making a decision about your life, and be willing to see all the moments where fear decides for you, where you don't do something because fear's in the way, or where you uh, stay, stay sort of um, safe, right? Because the fear is big. Or where you don't speak and, and say what feels true for you because of a fear of consequences. In all these ways, fear dictates our lives. 
And because it is not our highest truth, we're gonna feel like crap when that's in the driver's seat. You're gonna feel pretty miserable, pretty anxious, and pretty overwhelmed, or pretty sad when that's in the driver's seat. And so when you're resonating with fear, you're going to attract it or be drawn to it in all the places, all the deep hidden places in your marriage, all the places that come up when you're a mother with your own children you will be available for fear. So yesterday we said like attracts like um, to, use, to use that phrase. And when I'm holding an energy and I'm dominant in an energy of anxiety or of fear-based emotions, I'm gonna find it everywhere. It's gonna basically dictate my life and it's gonna influence my decision-making. It's going to be kind of the dominant force in how I approach the world and how I live in this world, which is why so many people are just wrought with anxiety. We could say, oh, it's early life trauma or, oh, it's a bad marriage or, oh, it's because she has, you know, two ADHD kids and it's really hard. Um, we can, we can make those arguments and we could prove why they're correct or why we're right in that. And we could cite all the evidence and we could stack all the evidence, but in none of that is a solution. In none of that is the resolving the fear-based resonance inside. Okay, it doesn't resolve the anxiety or the fear to justify why we're afraid. Are you guys with me? I know this is a very big teaching. It always winds up bigger than I than I intend. So let me let me cut to the chase. So when we are, I hope it's making sense. Tell me if it's making sense. So when we are filled up or resonating with or in the space of like anxiety as our kind of our dominant thing and then we're second guessing and then we're whatever, because that's the frequency we're on, we can't be on the frequency of joy. And this is really so important for everyone to notice. Whatever we're choosing to to be and i'm gonna call it being like whatever we're being we're being anxious that's in our being that's the energetic stamp or signature we're approaching life with so whatever we're being is what we are a match for okay so things then then we go oh my god it's everywhere it's everywhere because it's in us and and still even though this is like really into a lot of mainstream um uh, sort of um, culture and literature now, I think we're not getting it on a consciousness level. Like we have to keep getting more conscious of this. Whatever I'm a match for, I'm picking up, I'm getting, I'm attracting. I'm, I'm attracting within my partner, from my partner, I'm attracting it in, in my family. And so if you don't like what you're getting, then you have to change at a being level. And the, the lesson today is clarity because until we get into ownership of that, we have no power to get on the frequency of joy. We just don't. Nobody can put us on it. There's no pill that can give us that. There's no new marriage that can give us that level of internal fulfillment. There is no perfect child who can create our fulfillment for us. There's no perfect job. As you guys know, a lot of you have reached out to me and said, I thought if I moved, I would be, <laughs> you know, I would feel fulfilled. I would feel happy. And that's all external conditional happiness in Buddhism. It's, um, it's, it um, t talks a lot about conditional happiness. And it is, a, it is hoping and, and trying and praying and fingers crossed that like something outside of me will create a better me. And so I invite you into an awareness that let's, that, that isn't how it works, but what we're being will inform what we're getting. So if we want to be in fulfillment, if we, want, if we want to be loved and supported and respected, and if we want affection, and if we want for people to um, love on us and appreciate us, then what's the answer there, you guys? What do we have to learn how to be? We have to learn how to be in that kind of deep, connected, authentic, 
gratitude, appreciation of our own value, of our own worthiness. We have to own that. No one can own it for us. We have to learn how to build that kind of, of ownership within ourselves. And it's a brick by brick situation. It is, it isn't a snap, it isn't an overnight thing, but this process of coming into notice what you are being is the critical precursor to that work. So I invite you to get brave. I invite you to stand in, um, come to the table of your own life and, uh, and really look at these things. And as you do, you will notice things you haven't seen before. You will feel things you haven't seen before. And so, uh, all right, being what you're being yields the results in your life. You got that? And yes, from other people. Like it yields the results that you're getting from your spouse. It yields the results that you're getting in your bank account. It yields the results that you're getting in your business and from your children. The level of cooperation. that the, These things are not beyond your power. These things are not beyond your power or influence. We have a massive influence as women, as leaders of our families, as mothers. We set the tone for the way the family operates. We dial in what we want and family responds every time every time we are also interconnected we are all interconnected we are all part of a larger system a larger energetic system but we have individual me that we can control and that's where the influence is okay so never never think that you don't have influence so uh we we're doing this because we want to see we're, we're recognizing how we feel and what the evidence of that is so that we can see where it is hindering us. And when we see where and how it's impacting us or hindering us, then we can make an empowered choice about whether or not we're ready to really release that. Got it? All right, now for your assignment. Are you ready? Shoot me a thumbs up if you're ready. All right, you guys. So I'm gonna post this above and uh, and then and then so look for your assignment up above and then you can either create your own post or you can um, comment below. I was just trying to decide did I want to create I think I think let's keep doing it the way just for to keep it um, rather than creating another day to post. I'll just keep we'll keep it all under this one or post your own and I love that um, that that some of you did that. So keep that coming. Don't be afraid to take up space. <laughs> You're welcome here. Take up space, post your answers, post your responses, post your findings. So day two, if you haven't already, choose just one and it's okay to go back and do it again. If you, if you sort of wrote a book about it, it's okay. But encourage, I encourage you to identify one. All right, this isn't a full life overhaul. That isn't possible in a four day. Uh, self-directed challenge I want you to choose one thing that you are clear that you don't like feels terrible don't want to keep living it don't want to keep being it all right don't overcomplicate it just choose something and no you can't choose 10 things at once just choose one thing and I want you to follow the directions on that so if you haven't already done it go back and do it and then if you did already choose one you're good to go and now that you know that that state of being or that emotional state is a kind of like a stamp on your life, an emotional stamp or an emotional signature on your life, then you can know, we can safely know, that it's impacting your whole life. Every aspect of self is creating your life. And so the energy you're being is creating your life and your relationships. The energy you're being. I mean, think about it that way. You could pretend you're happy, but how are you really? It's what's true about how you're feeling, whether you've acknowledged it or not. Okay. And so what to be so clear that like there are going to be a lot of things that we haven't taken ownership of yet because that's a human experience. And depending on the level of inner work that you've done, if you haven't done any yet, there's gonna be a whole lot of stuff that hasn't entered or filtered into your conscious awareness yet. And that's okay. So you're just gonna use what you've got. And 
um, and give this your best shot for where you are. So now that you know that what you feel is kind of your energetic, um, it's your magnet, it's your magnet. And it's impacting what happens around you and within your relationships. Now that you know that, it's affecting the tone of your family time. It's affecting the respect that you can receive. It's affecting your ability to relax. It's affecting all those things. The feelings you have when you're at home in your house. It's all connected. Now let's look at what is the impact of it for you. And it's different for everybody. So I want you to take a moment and really get into stillness. And you can put your hand over your heart and just really breathe and reflect on how is my blank, how is my sadness, overwhelm, anxiety, how is the fear impacting my relationship, my family, my career? These are the main areas for the women that I work with. If you go, my life, it's really big. It's hard to be, it's hard to come up with answers when you go so big and global. So I really encourage you to keep it to my marriage, my home, my family, my relationship with my kids, my career. And you could pick, you don't have to do all of those. You could just choose what feels like the biggest area where this thing comes up for you. And it's very common that, <clears throat> you know, some of the women who come to work with me will will be very, very aware of how something is going awry in their marriage, but they're doing fine in parenting. They love being with their kids. You know, the problem shows up big in one area, bigger than in other areas. That's totally normal. Some people have incredible work stress and can't wait to get home to their family. It just depends on where it shows up for you. So the task today is take an honest inventory, an honest look, and the only way you're going to know, you guys, is to get quiet and get still and tune in because your inner self has all the answers. She has all of your answers. And guess where they don't live? They don't live there. They're not there. They do not live from here up. They live in here. So I want you to sink into your body. I want you to breathe into yourself. And I want you to scan your, your life in the areas of your relationships. Deep breath to cleanse the energy and open your energy and really get clear on where is the impact or what is the impact of anxiety, how I'm being, what I'm feeling in my relationships, in my marriage, in my work, in my health. And take a moment to listen. Listen. Don't, don't try to think to come up with an answer. Listen inward and see if you hear anything. And you may have to give it a few moments. And I'll give you an example. When I lose control and I'm angry and I then take it out on my kids and blame them, the result is fill in the blank. The result is they're scared of me. The guilt gets in the way of me connecting with them. They don't feel safe with me. I'm worried they won't trust me and our relationship will be rocky through their teen years and they'll get into trouble because they don't feel safe coming to me because I broke that trust. And I want you to try to identify three things, three levels of impact, three points of impact of staying in this kind of stuckness around your emotional state. Okay, I'm going to come up with another example for you. When I feel afraid, the result of making decisions from fear 
or parenting from fear or reacting to fear or in fear when my partner says something or when I need to say something but I'm scared so I don't. The result of that in my life is my family doesn't function the way I want it to. I, I hold a lot of anger as another result, which is getting in the way of partnership. Or another impact of living from fear is that my world has become so small and I don't feel any freedom. So we're not having the experiences as a family that I want to have. Is it making sense? Tell me in the comments. If you want me to help you come up with another example, drop a, um, drop a feeling state in the comments and I'll give you another one. Result of feeling overwhelmed is that I can't focus and make good decisions to get my life done, to make progress, to rest. It's never done. And so I can't rest. And so I'm not the mom I want to be because I'm freaking exhausted. Or I'm always picking at my kids. I'm overwhelmed by all the thoughts in my mind, all the jumble and clutter. And the impact of me staying in that space is that I'm not approachable to my kids. Are you guys writing? Are you listening to yourself? making notes. I want you to identify three things. Okay, mothers, three things that are resulting or points of impact that you have noticed that are resulting from when you're in this state of being. Okay? very empowering what I'm asking you to do. It's empowering to take ownership of your fuller experience because when you're just surviving it, you can never change it. You're just living at, um, you're living at like in the, in the energy of reacting to everything in reactivity. Okay. So when you're living in, okay, great, thanks. I see your, I see your, um, your comment, Summer. When you are living in reaction, you, you, I want to clarify that piece. We're always living at cause. Maybe I can go into this more tomorrow. We're always living at cause. When we're overwhelmed, when we're joyful, when we're content with our lives, or when we are depressed. We are, at, we are living at a level of cause. We may be doing it unconsciously, causing chaos. But we are causing it because everything comes from us, from inside of us, from our energy field that we're hooking up with because of the state that we're being. Okay? Radical ownership. What else do we want to be doing? Like, what better things do you guys have to be doing? I know for me, there's nothing more interesting than learning how to overcome these stuck places and where I'm challenged and where I'm not completely fulfilled in my relationship. Like, let's do it. Let's turn up the dial on incredible connection, joy, laughter, abundance. Like, that's it. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here to help you to do. So I love you so much. I'm going to leave you now um, to do your work and I want you to post and I'm excited to see what comes back. Don't be afraid to make your own post if you, if you want to um, fill up the group. I am so, so in inviting you to take up space, okay? All right, you guys, get on it. Do your day two, post them, comment on everyone else's, read everyone else's. Let's just get some, com some conversations going in here and really encourage each other for standing up for this energy of claiming the life that we want by releasing what we no longer want. All right. 
See you guys soon.